surprise! I'm in Seoul, South Korea right now and it's my second week of quarantining here. I wanted to tell you guys sooner but I didn't want to jinx anything because there are just so many documents that I need to prepare for this trip that I want to make sure that I am in Korea before I actually announce it to you all. But now that I'm in Korea, I do have some moving clips for you all. It was a bit hectic going through the airport and through all of like the customs and stations because I didn't take too many clips at the airport and also the sound quality isn't the best because I am using a new camera and I think the settings were a little bit wonky so the sound isn't the best but I did include subtitles. I wanted to make this video as informational and helpful as possible for you guys who might be going through something similar or if you're just curious about how the process is like in February 2021. I'll have two parts of this video, the first part being a couple of moving clips and some of the talking portions that I have there and the second part will be my informational portion of it so why I moved to Korea, what I'm doing here, what I needed to prepare to get to Korea and my whole process of going through the airport and getting to my quarantine Airbnb. Without further ado, let's just get the clips rolling. Welcome back to my channel. It's Helen and I'm sorry for the lack of videos and the whole reason is because I am moving to Korea. This is me just getting off of the security area. There's like no one here. Calvin and I are just walking over to our terminal. We're just sitting right here just to wait for our flight because it's a nicer area right here than it is like down in the waiting area. But yes, today is the day that I finally moved to Seoul, South Korea. I've been super busy just preparing for the move and just preparing all of like my documents and everything. So I haven't been able to be as active as I was on like all my platforms. But don't you worry, there's going to be a lot more content coming in the next couple of weeks. And honestly, like the next year. So Calvin is also here with me because he's going to be helping me move in and he's going to be staying with me for around three months, basically how long the tourist visa is. And I'll be living in Korea for around a year just studying Korean. I'm actually kind of nervous for moving outside of like my home, but I'm also like really excited because I feel like this is just like a new chapter and a new area to explore. I'm also really excited for the flight too because I'm one of those weird people that also likes airports or airplanes. Comment down below if you agree with me, but I just think going to an airport is a vibe, especially if you're actually going on an airplane to go somewhere. Obviously, I don't condone traveling right now just for leisure purposes. I am moving, so I'm going to be there for a little bit. But once we get to travel again, I hope that I can just like watch more travel vlogs and like maybe go on some places on my own. But that's after everyone gets the vaccine, of course. So they gave us these four forms. I actually flipped over this one because I actually started filling this out, but this is declaration form, I believe, the yellow one. And then this one is the travel record declaration. This is the traveler declaration form that's like customs, like how much of each goods you're bringing into the country. And this is the arrival card. So I'm going to be filling these out. And yeah, these are the documents that you can fill out on the plane before you actually get to customs in South Korea. So I got the bibimbap and there's the other option which is beef and potatoes but this one looks really good. I also got it with the cider. I think these are like side dishes right here and then the bibimbap with the gochujang I think is over there. Here is the rice and some soup. I'm so excited to eat this. I actually got to my Airbnb many hours ago, but all I did was shower, order some food, talk to some friends and family, and just checked in with them. But now I'm going to have to go walk to get my COVID test. Mm -hmm. 
So now that it's been a little bit more than one week in quarantine, I have a couple of quarantine tips for you all. So just in case you guys are also coming to Korea anytime soon, or you're also doing the Airbnb quarantine, hopefully these can be helpful for you. But besides that, let's just start from the very beginning. I bet a lot of you guys who have been subscribed to me for a while are wondering why I'm in Korea right now. And even though I wasn't ever really secretive about it, but I never publicly announced it, but I did quit my corporate job back in the end of 2020. If you guys didn't know already, I graduated from university in 2019. So I did work for a little bit more than a year after I graduated. My social media following definitely took off because of TikTok and I already had an existing YouTube channel that also gained a lot of traction within that time period. So much so that I felt like I was putting a lot of effort into my social media videos and everything. And it was really taking a toll on me because of all the time that I was spending doing that and all the time that I was spending doing my corporate job. And honestly, because I'm still really young and I have that kind of like post-grad realization that if I don't take the opportunities that are given to me now, I just won't have the opportunity to do them later or it'll be a lot harder. I'm a pretty risk averse person, so I definitely calculated the pros and cons to actually leaving my corporate job and pursuing this full time. But in the end, I decided that I'm still young. I could always go back to a corporate job if needed because of my prior experience. But for now, I would love to just see where this takes me and just to live out this content creator life and just to meet new people and could really connect with you guys. So that was towards the end of 2020 where I really started to do social media full time. And around that time, I also thought about where I was living. Before I moved to Korea, I was living in San Francisco Bay Area. So I actually was born and raised there and I went to UC Berkeley, which is in the Bay Area as well. So I've never actually really left California, actually more so Northern California. And I've always wanted to live in somewhere different, whether that be somewhere in California, like LA or New York or somewhere in the East Coast. But I've always regretted not studying abroad because I heard from so many of my classmates and my friends that studying abroad really like changed their perspective on life and they just got so many new experiences from it. So that's actually when I started looking into moving to countries where I feel like the whole situation is a lot better and more things are opening up because I do want to shift more into vlogging for you all and not just skincare because most of the videos that I like to watch on YouTube are actually not skincare related videos but more so vlogs. However, right now, there's not that many countries that are allowing US citizens to visit, let alone move there. But South Korea was one of those countries that still allow US citizens and we're still allowing visas to be issued out. And I remember when I visited Korea, it just encompassed all of the great things that I love about living in a foreign country. Just like the vibe of the city, the people that I've actually encountered were really friendly to me. I really appreciate how convenient it is here. I really did not like driving when I was living in San Francisco. so. I like how like there's really great public transportation and my top priority right now is how they're handling the whole pandemic situation because coming from a country that doesn't seem like they're handling it the best I think I have a lot of respect towards this country because of that and how fast they were to actually act upon something to protect their citizens and protect the people that are living in their country and I really wanted to experience that for myself another reason why Korea was really appealing to me was because I do make skincare content and a lot of the skincare brands that I know and love and use every single day are Korean beauty brands. I'd love to have the opportunity to just like work with them more and connect with them and just meet with them in person rather than just on a Zoom call. I think that would be super, super cool. So if you aren't of Korean descent or Korean nationality, there's two ways that most US citizens can get visas to Korea. The first way is to teach English and the second way is actually to be a student. Those are definitely two of the more common ways to get a visa. I was looking into both, but I had to be honest with myself. I'm a way better student than I am a teacher and I was already taking some Korean language courses when I was in college. It would just be a continuation of that learning process. I did get to talk to my friend Ben and if you guys watch my videos, you guys probably watch his as well. He's currently in Korea right now and also makes skincare content on TikTok and YouTube. He told me all about the program that he did when he was in Korea in 2019 living here for around three months and it was actually the Korean language program at Seoul National University. Before this, I did research some other Korean language programs. The one at Sogang is really, really popular, as well as the one at Yonsei. I think there's a couple of other ones that are pretty popular as well. I thought the Korean language 
language programs were a great way to learn the language and I'm already in Korea so I will have to learn Korean anyways. I was also interested in applying to Sogang University's Korean language program but I heard that because this semester is going to be all online, they're not actually issuing out visas for foreign students so that was kind of like a bummer for me but I decided to just apply to Seoul National University's Korean language program and after a couple weeks of applying, I got in. If you guys are interested in that program by the way, I'd be happy to make like a video about it once I actually start but for now I'll have the link to the actual program that I'm doing in the description box below so you guys can check it out if you guys are interested. After I got accepted into SNU, I went to go apply for a student visa and because I lived in San Francisco, there is a Korean consulate there so I just made sure to have all of my application and documents filled out and then I just booked an appointment on the Korean consulate website. Due to the current situation, I think they're only appointment based right now but it could change in the future. The visa documents are pretty straightforward, however if you don't live near a consulate and you actually have to mail it to your nearest consulate, I would do that ASAP because it can take a few days for it to get to the consulate and for the consulate to actually mail you back your visa. For me, it took around two to two and a half weeks of getting approved for my student visa, but after I got approved, I just drove back to San Francisco and I picked it up. So after I applied for the visa, there was a ton of things I had to do after that. I had to book my flight, decide if I wanted to do a hotel quarantine or an Airbnb quarantine, get a bunch of documents ready, get my PCR test, declutter my room, all of that stuff. So for my flight, I booked the Oceana flight from SFO to Incheon because I didn't want any layover. There's also direct flights for Korean Air as well. However, if you don't live near one of those big cities, you might have to do like one layover to get to a big airport and then fly from that airport to Incheon Airport. That one was pretty straightforward and after that, I had to decide if I wanted to do a hotel quarantine or if I wanted to do an Airbnb quarantine. I know there's a lot of confusion on the quarantine facility, whether or not you can do the hotel quarantine or you can do an Airbnb quarantine because usually the Airbnb ones are a lot more affordable affordable and I feel like some people just like the option of being able to order food and delivery and everything like that. So to clear up any sort of confusion as of right now when I'm uploading this video, you are allowed to do the Airbnb quarantine only if you're a Korean national, if you're of Korean descent and have actual relatives living in Korea, or if you're on a long-term visa. So for myself, because I am on a student visa, student visas are considered long-term visas, so I was allowed to do the Airbnb quarantine. But my boyfriend did come to Korea with me, but because he has a US passport, he's allowed a tourist visa of three months, but that's still considered a short-term visa. So unfortunately, he's in the hotel quarantine facility, which is fine because you can't really quarantine with another other person anyways unless you have separate rooms and separate bathrooms within the same house or if they're like your family members or you're like actually married to them for a while but I did hear about an instance where someone wanted to quarantine with their sister and the Korean government still wouldn't allow that. I honestly think it might depend on your quarantine officer. Because I'm in a studio space right now there's obviously only one room and one bathroom so I'm quarantining by myself in the Airbnb and my boyfriend's quarantining in one of the quarantine facilities in I think Myeongdong. Oh also another side note, you don't get to choose which quarantine facility you go to. They just take you on a bus to any sort of facility that might have any space available. Oh and Calvin also said that for his specific quarantine facility, it costs 1,600,000 Korean won. Another thing that I really really had to do before I actually left for Korea was take my PCR test. You need to have a negative PCR test in order to even board the plane to South Korea. And the cash is that this PCR test needs to be taken within three days of you actually boarding your flight. My camera overheated so I needed to take a quick break and I ordered egg drop which is like an egg sandwich place. But anyways, as I was saying, for example, for the PCR test, my flight was actually on Friday 11.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. In order for my PCR test result to be valid for me to board the plane to go to South Korea, I needed to take the test earliest Tuesday 11.30 p.m. However, no hospitals are open for COVID testing at 11.30 p.m., you know? So instead, I actually got my COVID PCR test Wednesday morning around 9, 10 a.m. Some places even give you results in the same day, like in a couple of hours, but I got my PCR test result the next day after around a little bit more than 24 hours. 
which I was so relieved when I got it because I thought I wouldn't get it within the time span that they need it. That means I wouldn't be able to get on the plane. <laughs> so besides booking your flight and your facility for the 14 days as well as getting the negative PCR test result, I do have a couple tips that I recommend that you do before you come to Korea because I feel like they're really helpful and they might interest you as well. The first one is a tip that I really really recommend most people especially if you're planning to stay in an Airbnb quarantine or just anything besides a hotel quarantine is to get a Korean SIM card shipped to your place wherever you live right now in order to get a Korean phone number. You have no idea how helpful having a phone number is during these times, but because especially if you're going to be quarantining outside the hotel quarantine facility, they need to be able to call you if anything happens. If you want to get food delivery, you need to have a phone number as well. It's just super convenient and it's just nice to have the SIM card with you before you leave and before you land in Korea, just so when you actually land in the plane, you can switch out the SIM card and have the SIM card ready to use right when you get there. Usually what I did when I traveled to foreign countries was actually get a SIM card once I arrived in that country's airport but because we are in a pandemic right now and once you actually arrive in Korea they kind of herd you on to the next like station so there's not really any chance for you to wander off and get your own SIM card and I'll have the service that I use linked in the description box below so you guys can check it out I think it's under Trazi also because I'm moving to Korea I made sure to cancel my current SIM card because I was not on a family plan I was just on my own plan but because I canceled my current SIM card, I made sure to leave like at least a month or a week or so so that just in case I needed to do like any sort of two-factor authentication, I could just give that SIM card to my parents and they could actually like look at like what the code is and send it to me if I really needed it. That's another thing that you guys should do too to save yourself the hassle. I don't know how many of you guys have two-factor authentication authentication on because I usually have it on for everything just because it's really great for security purposes and if you don't have it on you guys should definitely turn it on and make sure you're protecting yourself that being said I really recommend that you contact any sort of important accounts that you have such as your bank or whatnot to tell them you are going to South Korea and just to turn off the authentication factor you will be using a separate phone number when you are in Korea and you won't be able to access your US or your home country phone number so I really recommend you just turn it off for like that time that you're in the plane or whatnot you're, you're in transit to Korea and then turn it back on when you're in Korea so that the two-factor authentication code can be sent to your actual phone number or instead of actually using the text for your two-factor authentication you guys can use one of those authenticator apps Another thing is to make sure your phone is unlocked. I bought my phone at the Apple store so it automatically comes unlocked. But if you have bought like a phone from like Verizon or AT&T or any one of those carriers, make sure that it's unlocked so you can use other SIM cards with it as well. Let's see what else I have on my list. Another thing is that I really recommend that you exchange some currency when you're actually in like your home country because a lot of the currency exchange places were already closed. Like they weren't going to open for another couple hours and I didn't want to wait around for that. Although I haven't been using cash at all, like even when I had to take my taxi and everything, I just paid in card and it was fine. My credit card has no foreign transaction fees so it won't actually charge an extra like fee if you use it overseas and I make sure to notify my bank that I will be in South Korea so they don't flag it as fraud. So if you do have a no foreign transaction fee credit card, I think most places in Korea would accept a visa card, then you're pretty much good to go. One more thing is that I actually got an international driver's license before I came to Korea just in case I want to drive around and if I'm in a situation where I do need to drive, I have that international driver's license on me. It's super simple to get an international driver's license if you're from the US. All you have to do is go to your local AAA branch and fill out the application bring I think two passport photos and $20 and they'll get it to you in no time I think I got my international driver's license within like five ten minutes or something it's just something nice to have I don't really like driving but I mean I can drive if needed for my actual airport process it was pretty simple when I was in the US at SFO there was like no lines and all I had to show them was my PCR test result as well as my visa and all like the normal things such as like your passport as well also if you're flying economy 
me I know you can check in two bags each one can be up to 50 pounds although I will say that one of my bags was like 52 pounds but they just like let it slide because I'm pretty sure there's not that many people that were checking in bags anyways I wouldn't count on that though but that did happen to me so what we did was that we checked it in four bags because Calvin and I were traveling together three of them were mine and one of them was his and I just had my carry-on and personal item and all Calvin had was his personal item it was a very very fast process though like we went through the whole check-in process as well as the security process within like less than 20 minutes which is unheard of before the pandemic and everything and the actual plane ride was super smooth I think I was awake for the first two hours when we were eating and the last two hours but after that I just knocked out because everyone had a whole road to themselves once we landed in Korea that's when the whole process began they actually checked our temperature our forehead temperature as well as our in-ear temperature I was really scared because I saw other vlogs talking about how some people were detained in like the corner or something because their temperature was too high and they had to take a COVID test on the spot so I make sure to like take off my jacket and everything because it can get hot and really frazzled bringing around your bags and there's so many people around you so I just wanted to cool down a little bit so I suggest you do that as well thankfully we didn't have to go through any of that our temperature was fine and all we did was make sure we showed them the PCR test I think the whole process this sounds really daunting but all of the officers were really nice and they all spoke English as long as you have your required documents everything should run very smoothly so one of the stations they actually download the whole quarantine app for you so it's a quarantine app that I check my temperature and log my temperature in every single day for two weeks straight during that time they actually asked me for my Korean phone number but they also asked me for a Korean phone number of a friend that's currently in Korea right now I thought they wouldn't ask me that because my friend Ben came to Korea a couple of weeks before me and said they just called his phone number and it was fine but for me they asked for a friend so I gave them Ben's number and he picked up he just said like my name he knows that I'm here and like the address that I'm gonna be quarantining at and it was all good to go it was a pretty quick call I think it was like less than a minute after they just checked all of our documents we were free to go but I mean it's not really free to go because you weren't really allowed to wander off anywhere there's like specific lines so there was one side where you go if you're doing the hotel quarantine and they give you like a necklace as well so that's when Calvin and I split off Calvin went to the hotel quarantine side and I went to the self quarantine side and in the self quarantine side was really nice because a CU convenience store was available so I was able to pick up some snacks some water just to hold me over for the time being I did end up ordering delivery online for some more water because girl needs to drink some water you know but that was really nice to have and I just kept walking and following the signs and then they had a couple sections one to take the bus to where you want to go and another one to take a quarantine taxi and I chose a taxi because I don't really want to have to deal with all of this I had two massive luggages including a carry-on luggage as well as a personal item so I didn't want to have to lug that around everywhere so I chose to go with a quarantine taxi I just checked in with the girl in the front and she assigned me a taxi driver the taxi driver was really nice he helped me with my bags and everything and he drove me directly from Incheon to my quarantine Airbnb the ride from Incheon to my my Airbnb in Gangnam was around a little bit less than an hour because it was really really early in the morning and no one was out yet and I paid the taxi driver 70,000 Korean won which was pretty standard once I got into the quarantine facility which I am here right now I made sure to just get settled in with everything this office tell is really nice and the host was super clear on how to actually get into the building which I very much appreciate because I didn't want to be fumbling around with everything especially because I'm supposed to go straight to my apartment after I got settled in I think it was around 10 a.m. that day so I made sure to call the quarantine contact on the app that they installed just to ask them where the actual address of the public health center is so I can actually either take a taxi or walk there to get my COVID test because you need to get your COVID test within the day that you arrived actually so my flight came in really early in the morning but if your flight comes in later in the afternoon or in the evening ish you do have 24 hours to get your COVID test so so let's say you come in at around like 5 30 p.m a lot of the public health centers close at 6 so you'll probably go to the public health center to get a covid test the next morning or afternoon ish so they actually do allow you to walk to the public health center yourself to get the covid test but for me the public health center was like 50 minutes walking and i didn't want to walk 50 minutes and i didn't want to be outside of like my quarantine facility or my quarantine space for that long because you're supposed to walk straight there not stop at anything don't come in contact with anyone and then walk straight back so 
Instead, I called a taxi under a cacao taxi and just paid in person. I checked with the health official and they said that this is fine because the quarantine taxi service wasn't available on Sundays. So they're like, oh, a normal taxi is fine as long as they take you directly here. So I just called a regular taxi. I called a cacao taxi black because you can actually pay for that in person because I can't pay for any online orders or book anything online because I don't have a Korean bank account. So I just went to the Gangnam Public Health Center. They took two swabs. They took a throat swab as well as a nose swab. I highly suggest for the nose swab to really hold your breath because they do go up really high up there and it is kind of uncomfortable. But I think holding your breath really helps with that. Then I just took a taxi back to my quarantine facility and I've been here ever since. They actually got my results back to me the next day. So it was really, really fast. After you get a negative result and everything is okay, they actually assign you to a specific person to be your quarantine officer. So that specific person contacted me. They actually contacted me with a translator because she didn't speak English. So there was an English translator involved. If you guys are scared that you guys can't speak Korean or whatever, don't worry about that. They're really good about it. And my quarantine officer got in touch with my number. She texted me when she was coming by to drop off some supplies, such as like some disinfecting spray and all of that stuff, including some masks that I can use when I get out of quarantine. She also gave me some trash bags that I can use for my COVID trash because technically the trash that I have is going to be contaminated. So they're going to pick it up at the end of my quarantine and dispose of it properly. So right now, all of my trash goes into those orange specific trash bags, except for any sort of food waste that I have, such as banana peels, orange peels and whatnot. I don't want them to rot because I can't leave my trash outside my apartment. I don't really have a patio or anything. So it will make my apartment smell bad if I just let that food waste sit there for two weeks. So I actually put my food waste in my freezer, which is a hack to not make your apartment smell bad throughout your entire quarantine. And when they're actually going to come pick up the trash, I'll just take all of that frozen food waste out and put it into one of the trash bags. As for food, I've been getting food a couple of different ways. The first way is through delivery apps. So one of the main delivery apps that can take foreign card is Shuttle and that should work for most of you guys. You technically don't even need a Korean number as well. I remember using this app even when I was in Korea last time and didn't have a Korean number. They have a pretty good selection if you're living in one of the more populated places like Gangnam. And of course they deliver pretty quickly as well. Another thing I've been doing is actually ordering delivery off G Market. So G Market actually is one of the only Korean online stores that has an option for foreign credit card or PayPal. So what you can do for G Market, it's really similar to like Amazon or Amazon Fresh. There is actually an option called like G Market Fresh or same day delivery. Well, they deliver the same day if there's any available time slots or early on in the next day. And for that service, I usually order things like fruits and vegetables. As for things such as water or other things that I don't have with me right now, such as a shower filter, because I realized Korea has hard water, which can be more irritating to the skin than the soft water that we have as tap water in the US. I've ordered a good amount of times on G Market for G Market Fresh as well as just regular G Market. So it's very doable and they always deliver it right in front of your door. So once they deliver it and leave like the vicinity, I open the door and just take my packages inside my apartment. So that's pretty much all the tips that I have right now. I still have like five more days left of quarantine and I'm getting my second COVID test on Saturday because I get to leave this whole apartment and go outside to the real world on Sunday noon. So I'm very excited for that. I'm just counting down the days and trying to be productive. I am vlogging this week and basically the entire time that I'm in Korea. So if you guys are interested in future Korea vlogs or you guys have any other questions for me about quarantine process and all of this, leave them down below in the comments so I can respond to them or just make a separate video about it. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful and you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like this video, make sure to click the like button down below and subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this. There'll be a lot more content coming soon, both skincare and lifestyle. Oh, and if you guys are interested, make sure to follow me on Instagram and TikTok because I have more real-time updates there. Usually it takes a couple of days or a week for me to edit my YouTube videos, so Instagram stories is where it's at. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time. Bye!